Okay, so we've got the wire coming out of the positive terminal connected to a switch, and we've looped the wire four times, so we get four times the current going through. So what can you say about the force? Is it going to be larger or smaller? How many times larger? Four. Four times larger, right? So as a result, we'll have the force being four times larger, so it'll be easier to see. Now, since these magnets are so strong, you're going to actually see the force. It's going to be a noticeable force. I think he's got it wired around like this, so the current's going to go in this direction across here. Conventional current is going across in this direction, I think. Okay? And which side is it off? Okay. So that's the south end, so that'll be north end. So the magnetic field is going from here to here, from right, from my right to my left, or from your left to your right. Okay, so the magnetic field is going across in this direction. We've got the current coming across in, was it this direction? Yeah, it's going across yeah. in this direction. Which direction will the force be? It's going that way. So up? Well, which way? I think, I think the way he's wrapped it, the current is going in this direction. Yeah, so yeah? yeah? And the magnetic field is going across in that direction, so which direction yeah. is the force? Yeah, right? Many fingers, many field lines. Point your fingers in the direction of the field line. Point your thumb in the direction of the current in your palm. Use the force. Kind of like a slap. Okay, so what's happening is our magnetic field is north here and south there. So it's north to south, it's going across in this direction from my right to my left, so your left to your right. And the current is traveling from this red wire through this, through this uh, switch, through the yellow wire. So why is it moving like up? If, 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 give me a second. And then it's switching around, so something funny happens here, and the wire actually, the current goes in that direction. Okay. That's yeah, something funny happens there. We've looped it up weird, and it goes across in this direction. So it's going in my clockwise direction. Okay. Now, when we turn the switch on, we have a current passing through a magnetic field. What do you expect to happen? Obviously, a force. Yeah. And press time. That's it. Okay. <laughs> now, let's see the difference between this and one wire. See what the difference is. Do you think the force is going to be bigger or smaller? It's smaller. Or smaller. Okay. Obviously not as big, right? Mm -hmm. Don't expect it to be as big. But when you have four wires together, <laughs> the force is massive. Okay, it's actually high enough to strong, strong enough to lift it up over the, the barrier. Okay, so if we use a weaker set of magnets, what do you reckon will happen? Bigger force or smaller force? Smaller. Oh, just give me a sec. Okay. That's alright. Push back. Push back. <laughs> Same distance as that. Ready? Clearly the force isn't as yeah. strong. It's large. Not as strong as before. But before it was actually lifting it over the barrier. Okay, and that is the matter effect. Okay, motor effect, the force on a current carrying conductor in an external magnetic field. Why does this force occur? Because the current that's traveling, which is a magnetic field, interacts with the external magnetic field, you get a force. It's got a split ring commutator, uh, it's, it's got a couple of, several number of loops, right? This thing here is a rotor, that's a stator, it's got the magnets, okay? And if I connect the wires together, make contact with the commutator, then it'll start spinning. And you expect it to be okay. okay, so clearly it's moving in a clockwise, clockwise. an anti-clockwise direction from me, clockwise to you guys. Yeah. Right? So what do you think will happen if I switch it around? Opposite direction. You expect it to go in the opposite direction and see if that happens. I bet it will go the same direction. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it went in the opposite direction. And there you go. Okay? So that's a simple DC motor. And obviously how it works is you've got the current passing through one end of the split ring commutator. You see, most of the time you guys would expect the split ring commutator to be maybe like a ring, like this. It's been cut in half and separated a bit, right? Well, in this case, the split ring commutator is actually made from the ends of the coil itself. Ends of the wire that's been wound around to make a coil. And when it's been wound around, uh, sorry, it's been wound around and it's been made into a little, you know, like a little circle at the end. Okay? It's been made into a little circle at the end, and instead of having that actual connection to the split ring commutator, it's got these little pieces of wire acting as a split ring commutator with the plastic acting as the gap. 
And that's the key. That's the key difference between this and what you guys normally see. Yeah, other than that, it's exactly the same. It is a, it is a DC murder. It's exactly the same, right? And pay close attention to the fact that the gap is perpendicular to the plane of the coil. That's very important. Well, what? The gap. Yeah. It's perpendicular to the plane of the coil. So the difference between what we did before and what we did now is that before we had a wire and there was a force on it. And here we have a wire and there's a force on it as well. What's the difference? The difference is that now we've wound this wire into a coil. And when you loop it, since the forces occur in opposite directions, this creates a torque if you put an axle. It actually cause a torque. And this torque is, is obviously a rotational loop, which is what you see here as a, a motor moving. Our setup is an ammeter. Okay? and a coil. This coil has 300 turns and what we're going to see is, is, is whether movement of a magnetic field around the coil induces a current. Okay, So Faraday, our, our good old friend Faraday says there is you know, some sort of correlation. Let's see whether it's true. Alright, so here's a north and I'm going to stick a north into this coil. So clearly there is something happening, right? Clearly there's something happening. Now the three things that your syllabus requires you to test are the distance between the coil and the magnet, so whether the distance between the coil and the magnet has an effect on the actual current produced, whether the strength of the magnet is, uh, actually has an effect, and uh, whether the relative motion, how quickly you're moving it, has an effect. So these are the three factors that we're going to test. So first things first, let's test the distance, whether the distance has an effect. So we use a slightly stronger magnet, Doing this makes it slightly stronger. So that neutralizes everything. Neutralizes everything. <laughs> right. Fair enough. You like this, you know. No, I don't use that later. Use that later. Okay. <laughs> strength. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it in and out at the same speed up here. Okay. Do we get any movement? A bit. Very very small amount. Yeah. What do you think will happen if I bring it closer? Well, it gets higher. Okay. It gets more significant. Exactly. In the words of Shri, more significant. Or if you like, it's bigger. <laughs> okay? Alright? So clearly, if I move it here, nothing's going to happen. Nothing, right? Like some, some movement. Yeah. Right? But if I do that here, you get some significant movement. So clearly, the closer the magnet, the stronger, or the, the more, the larger the EMF produced, and as a result, the larger the current produced, right? Because this thing here is an ammeter, not a, it's not on the volt at the moment, it's on ammeter. It's on the, being an ammeter. So clearly the larger the, uh, sorry, the closer the distance, the larger the current. Now can someone explain to me why this would be so? There's a good word for it when there's more flux lines in a certain area. Yeah, it's more flux, dense. Yeah, beautiful. It's dense. It's more dense. So for a given area, you have more flux lines passing through it. So when you move it, you get a bigger cut. You get more flux lines cutting. And as a result, you get larger EMF produced. Fair enough? Okay, so clearly distance is a big factor. What next? The strength. So this is a very weak magnet. Okay, let's see whether this is stronger or just this by itself. And then we'll check the, the very dangerous ones. Okay, so I'm going to try and move at the same speed. Okay, we get, we get a certain amount of movement. It's about the same as like yeah. just the one magnet. Yeah. That actually makes it weaker because the south and the north sort of... Yeah, like yeah. The all the magnetic flux lines come together. It's not as strong. This is weak. <clears throat> It's weak because they neutralize each other. It's kind of like if you put a positive charge and negative charge together and you get nothing. Same here. But if you turn one around and force, them, force them together, then it's strong. Stronger. This will be stronger, okay? But not this. Let's see this. Right, so this is very weak, okay? Have a look. It reaches up to about two. Yeah, about two. Oh, yes. Well, just a bit more. Okay, maybe if I put like this. Clearly more significant, right? Yeah. The same amount of movement, you're getting it moving up to about four, so it's double the strength. 